All right, hey, we're back again. Uh, this time it's the um, the base to the Hogwarts castle here. I, I built a a few. Well, I shouldn't say I built. I put together a few months ago. Um, this is one and a half inch um, XPS. So you know, I was gonna do a whole lot of other things with this, but um, more and more I started looking at what would have to change, and uh, I noticed. Um, from the third movie to this movie, there was very, very subtle differences, but there were quite a few, quite a lot of differences. So I ended up just deciding to do the base and leaving it at the only upgrade I'm going to do for this whole thing. So there it is. Um, all of it built together. Um, this, I don't know, it seemed like it was the adequate amount of layers necessary. Um... Whereas the bottom is really more just the base to hold it all together. But, uh, because that's pretty much the ground level at the top of that bottom piece there. Uh, so I guess technically the bottom piece could be made out of like half inch foam core. But since I had a whole bunch of it, I decided to go ahead and just use it. Uh, so this is, uh, I'm just tracing. This is just the generic stages. I'm just tracing it so I know where to put it back after I have to take it apart to glue it here. Um, this is slightly watered down um, tacky glue, no big deal. Okay, so there is the the rough staircase pattern that I made from some pictures I found online uh, from the third movie. This is just regular foam core, Elmer's foam core actually, with all the paper still attached. Um, I just most of this is uh, you're seeing is my design phase. I don't normally film this stuff because. Um, sometimes the finished product is not going to look anything like it. But there it is, sort of all pieced together, uh, section by section. And I'm trying to make it fit uh, where it'll sit on the different stages of the foam. Inevitably, I figured that out, but in mine um, here that I filmed, <laughs> it doesn't always look that way. But uh, I get that going. It actually worked out pretty well, though. So I'm just literally gluing... Um, images that I printed on a laser printer um, on regular foam core, the same Elmer's foam core, and then cutting them down. I'm only doing it on one side, and then I go back and then, you know, sort of glue in the uh, the other. Yeah, well, there it is, right there, actually gluing it on the other side. I'm not sure if that's the this is the best way of doing it, but it worked. Um, maybe in hindsight sort of printing it in one image and doing it later would have been good but uh, I don't know this is why this is the way I did it <laughs> I'm just putting a little crease in here to kind of give some definition so it looks like maybe some stairs might have been there or something and I, I'd put little brown lines thin brown lines on the different images different sides and that side is the cut side so you know, I don't want to, you know, you don't, you don't want to cut the the whole thing off. You just want to cut it so you can get that one last piece of paper to fold. Definitely have to use a ruler because otherwise, it, it'll it won't bend straight. So I'm just taking some paint here, um, generic paint, whatever the color matches uh, closest to the thing, and then I'm just painting it all, every exposed um, piece of foam, white foam. Uh, except the bottom, because that's going to be covered up, of course. But I don't know if you notice all the pieces that I've already created for the boathouse. That's all made of chipboard. Um, the reason I didn't do that for the stairs is because the chipboard stuff took forever to bend, and it was complicated, and I didn't want to do it again. <laughs> so I went with foam for the stairs. So um, here's the assembly after I figured out how to at least make it work for the boathouse. Um, that little tower folding chipboard the way you, I was folding the foam stairs in the background there it is not the same it is much harder to do with this chipboard um, I was just having real problems with it but here's me assembling pretty much where the whole thing is gonna go I'm gonna make some modifications to the to the downloadable file you know just because I noticed that the base doesn't go all the way over and all these little miscellaneous things but uh, I just filled this up with uh, regular uh, foam, XPS foam, I guess. Trimmed it up, painted it black, so I had something that to fit the the topper on. 
and later I actually uh, make the top smaller because it looked a little too big. And you'll notice over here on the right, um, I went back, the chipboard was on the roof, and I went back and did it out of foam. Um, peeled off the paper on both sides and just uh, carved it up a little bit because the chipboard just didn't work. I think maybe in hindsight, I probably could have just made this out of foam core and nobody would have known and it probably would have been a lot easier. But uh, I thought maybe chipboard would be more resilient. Uh, it might be, but it was it was tougher. So here are all the pieces sort of cut to the steps of the of the foam. And you notice the little round barrels there. I don't show me making those, but I just literally wrapped the one of the square images around a pencil and glued it. And then, you know, boom, there's the little turret barrels or whatever you want to call them. Um, I'm assuming where all the seats are from climbing up this like 19 story staircase um, Okay, see yeah, there's a couple of them there And so I've already hot glued all the stairs down and I use the pins to keep them down So I don't have to use my hands for everything. I'm just turning it upside down so I can get the idea of where the um, You know the size of the stuff is um, and because it is just paper uh, my hands always in the way so sorry but because of this paper, I have to be really, really careful. Um, I don't want to bend it or and have it collapse in on itself. So I have to kind of roll it around and then eventually saw it in half. But as I say, I'm not too worried about it being a little rough on those edges because, you know, it's going to be under um, the plaster or whatever else I use. So... Um, I tried to keep this as accurate as I possibly could, but there are a couple things that I just had to make some exceptions on. I, I you know, it is what it is. Um, the puzzle obviously is not 100% accurate, um, so I had to kind of make some some judgment calls. And you know, I, but for the most part, the stairs are pretty pretty to scale. Um, they are pretty close to the marker. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of the stair pitches might be a little off. I had to guess on that stuff. But um, I think overall, though, looking, you know, comparing it to the photographs, it actually does have some similarity. Um, so I think, I say, I think I guessed right for the most part. All right, so I have to square off the areas that I had cut and bent over. Um, so there's, I left a little bit of a gap, so I, I'm just using, um, some sculpting paste or some drywall mud. I can't remember actually what it was, but I'm just squaring them off. It doesn't have to be too, too pretty because the images are going to go over it. And, um, I think this is, I can't tell if this is a little blurry or not, so sorry. But, um, this is me just sort of sticking... Um, after it's all said and done, I'm just cutting some more pieces out and gluing around the the folding lines and some other places like that, and kind of fitting it in. And it actually blended in pretty well. You can kind of see the you know the the edges of the paper a little bit because of the thickness, but it does blend pretty well. Um, this made me think after I did this, you know, would it be that hard to go ahead and just glue it down and then just make the whole image and wrap it around as it goes? I, I don't know. This is the way I did it. Okay, well, um, you know, this is the same thing. I've done this thousands of times. Well, not thousands of times, but a lot of times. So it's just me cutting hunks off of the the area here to try to figure out. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure at this stage if I'm going to actually use um, molded rocks or if I'm just going to do um, sculpt and mold or whatever. I'm, I'm not sure. So I'm just kind of getting a basic shape right now. And um, I opted for a little bit of both, actually. These are some basic rock molds that I got from um, Woodland Scenic. So uh, I just, I don't know, I just, I just did it every rock I could find, really. Um, and uh, I did it a couple times. I probably used about 10 or 12 overall. But uh, I went through the sculpt mold first and just tried to place all the big rocks, trying to figure out where to put them. Um, not very far into this, I realized that I was going to get, this was starting to get pretty heavy. <laughs> so I had to space out the, um, plaster rocks to make sure that I didn't, um, 
make it too heavy on one side versus the other, make it hard to pick up. Um, but as I say, I go through all this. Every time I place um, a molded rock, I try to make the sculpt mold or whatever around it kind of shape more like it. But a lot of times I'm, I'm sort of doing this all from scratch because this whole section right here doesn't have um, a rock mold on it at all. This is all just me sculpting around. Okay, so as you know, I'm, as all that is drying, which takes like four days, by the way. Um, this is uh, me recording my trial and error, trying to figure out what to do. I made this one image, um, thinking that you could cut it all out, and that little bottom piece there would be the base to support it all. Um, that was a big mistake. It took too much, and um, you need to cut them out, you know one stick at a time there because it's too complicated otherwise <laughs> it all lines up but it's a sort of a pain in the butt you know and here is where i realized that i cut it too too long the the fiber board or whatever i used here uh 16th inch board um I, it needs to be shorter so there's a little bit of image that sticks out so you have the image to glue See, like that right there. It needs to have a little tab on it. Um, so in the process of me doing all that, I, I pull it away a little bit. But the idea is to, you know, have it to where it, the the 16th inch foam or the 16th inch board, whatever I'm using, um, butts right up against the actual factory board there. And then the paper is what it will help stick it and help it glue to, and stay together. I'll figure out what I'm saying at one point or another. <laughs> there it is. Um, um, I have to be very careful because inevitably, every time I use Gorilla Glue, I I lose my concentration and I start gluing my fingers together, and it's horrible. <laughs> I don't I don't know what the deal is, but um, you know, as I'm doing that, uh, I still think there might be a better way of doing it than what I'm doing it, but. You know, I, I don't know which one it is. So um, I decided to, stay, you know, I think it looked pretty good overall. I mean, putting it all back together, it, you know, if I don't, if I stop twisting it all over the camera here, um, you know, the, I would have liked to have just done the whole thing as one new piece, but trying to cut uh, all those windows by hand, uh, it's not something I'd be able to do. So I just opted to extend it. So this is a little mismatch. I'm all over the place in this video. And the reason is because this is the actual order in which I did stuff. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I get impatient and I lose my concentration really quickly. And, um, and so, uh, I, you know, something's drying and then something's doing this, something's doing this. And so, you know, I'm all over the place. So in this case, I'm taking the existing stuff, trying to add to it. I'm, I'm trying to do all these rocks and stuff in small sections. Um, and the reason is, is that, in um mostly i can say i just work on a little area and then i call it a day <laughs> and uh or i'm trying to wait for something to dry now this stuff because the weather changed and, and whatever it just got it just took forever to dry it i think i inevitably had to wait four or five days just to get the stuff uh where it would completely dry i don't, I don't know why it took so long but anyway um I'm slowly building up on these staircases here because I'm not quite sure what I'm doing yet. At this moment, I still am kind of hoping that I can leave the castle puzzle um, where you can detach it from the base. Um, I later realized that that's impossible to do because I have to make some stuff permanent. So especially when it comes to this uh, bridge and stuff started to move around a lot and i had to keep and so eventually i'm going to have to anchor it all down but um now really quickly um my idea was to trim the stuff up you know that way that's why i made everything the same length that way depending on if you're going to do this yourself you know you can you have some room to maneuver the my biggest mistake is what i should have done was trim it up push the put the piece down there uh, make some thick plaster and pour it just on the bottom of the base there to secure those legs first. 
and then I could have built up some more sculpt and mold or whatever else to make the rocks. I did not do that. It should have been the best way of doing it, but you know, here we go. I've had pretty good luck with um, sculpt and mold in the past, but this time around, um, it pretty much like sealed up the. It would not accept like nearly any uh, stain work. It was a real problem. And so I had, you know, three different color stains and then see how, I mean, it's barely even touching it. Um, this was upsetting and, and this was going to take forever. I did it like two or three times. It still didn't work. So I had to go back and opt for the paint method, which is fine. But I wanted to use stain on the rocks, but oh well. So I had to paint everything. So I used um, like an ivy green, a couple different color, or a couple different shades of brown and a gray and I just kind of you know here and there back and forth until I got it where I, where I liked it and then I went back and finally used the um the um, the black stain again to kind of darken it all over um, um I think I do this about twice I think before I'm finally done Okay, so I finally, at this point, have decided that I cannot keep having this castle shift, and I need to make it permanent. So I hot glue the whole thing down. Um, and while that's waiting and drying, sort of cooling off, I do the lake, which is like cerulean blue and like ivy green and a little... I can't remember. I think I, I had uh, gray and some black, too. And I just kept moving it around until I got where I liked it. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't thin out the paint a little bit. And it, um, it left brush strokes. And I was impatient and didn't go back and do it a second time. And you can see it right there. See, see the brush strokes? Uh, inevitably, everything, all the top coats on it kind of hide the brush strokes. But I probably should have fixed that ahead of time. Before I just sort of committed to moving forward. Um... This is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just putting the rest of the stuff on. And now that I have that permanently attached and hot glued, I am now building up the little section here with sculpt mold to build the extra rock formation and hide um, this thing. I was going to opt to do a cardboard version of it to kind of match the puzzle, but I got lazy and I just wanted to sculpt the mold route. So this is some regular, like, bathroom caulking silicone caulking uh like a ge brand i think is what it is i just got the thing that says clear um this was a pain in the butt um probably because i should have made the the tip a lot wider but uh, i just got fascinated with the fact that it doesn't blend together it just lays on top of each other so this stuff does not want to lay very well it's super, super sticky, of course, and it does not flatten out. Um, well, it doesn't completely. Um, and a lot of air bubbles get trapped in there. And this is the first time I've ever, I think, done this, uh, tried this before. So I don't think I've done this before. I don't know. But let's go along, get a little bit on the shore, just uh, make it look a little bit wet on the rock. And I just keep messing around until it works. So now here is me being impatient. <laughs> while all this stuff is trying to dry and then I fill this in with um, Liquitex like sculpting paste which I should have not used because um, it does form pretty good peaks but for some strange reason it's just not um, it, it does kind of mesh together so it's not good for creating like a rock formation it might be dirt or stuff like that but and so now I'm going back and I'm repainting um, a little bit of everything. Um, and I'm creating more darker tones on the bottoms of these rocks. I'm not worrying about the highlights too much because I'm planning on putting like grass and stuff on it. So, And so I just decided that it's best to just uh, like to, to accent some of the sort of the darker areas. Um, like, you know, areas that are more walked, I guess. And um, just the the underside of all the rocks so that way it's just you know it actually really helped with the the relief making it look a little bit you know better i think 
Um, I don't use this ballast. That was, I, I, it was just overkill. The scale here made them look like boulders. So I just use these two things. And uh, I'm showing some sculpting paste, but I don't actually use that. Um, and uh, let me put it out of the way first. I can never seem to have enough room. But, you know, this thing is four feet wide. So there's not a whole lot of room to play around with. So my intention here is not to create like a whole dirt layer. My intention is to create like a variation of areas that are not getting enough water. So there's like sort of, you know, dead grass as opposed to dirt. Um, you know, but also dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it kind of worked um, hand in hand. Um, most of the stuff I bought just for this project here. Um, and I think I've only done landscaping kind of one other time. So I'm just kind of winging it for the most part. I think it turned out okay. But uh, I got lucky because, you know, static grass is way too big for this scale. So. So I go along the whole model and I do that in these little top areas here. So I don't do it too much. And then I go back over some different areas, including some of the over top of the brown. And then come in here with this sort of light green. I'm not really quite sure what season it is. I'm just going to say summer. <laughs> and uh, so here are these generic trees. Um, they worked for the most part, but some of them I think scale wise I probably they're too big but who cares they worked I think so anyway it's Hogwarts there's got to be some 200 year old trees hanging around there somewhere um, besides the Wampin Willow and uh, so this the, those trees were really generic and so most of the stuff kind of fell off of them but it was perfect for the clumping to create like um, uh, scale wise you know these are not bushes these are more like little f patches of forest um, here and there stuff that you know maybe grew wild that kind of thing so I tried my best to do like those um, um, the, the little glue you know to create texture and stuff like that but everything kept flattening out for me so I had to just go back and paint in my own sort of waves and bubbles I so I just you, you know I need a better brush though but um, I just use a damp cloth created a little, couple little waves here and there and then damp clothed the whole thing to kind of make it blurry and, and smudge it in together. I think it worked for the most part, but I really would have loved to figure out why all my peaks just sort of mellowed out when I, I used all the same stuff that I've seen on these other videos. I don't know. But ultimately, this is, this is it. We'll get into some uh, pictures here in a second. <laughs> 